Oh yeah, today we're going to talk about uh, putting this 17.5 turn brushless motor, censored brushless motor, into Alfie's uh, TT02B Neo Scorcher. Mm -hmm. You see, we've got we've got um, a 21 turn fireball in there. Let's move those out of the way. We need to take that out now. Uh, we're going to retain the standard uh, Tamiya ESC, the TBLE and get it all connected up and I'll show you how to solder the connections onto the new motor and solder in some new connections onto the Tamiya ESC. So the first thing we need to do then is uh, take the motor out. So here we go. So there goes the cover. So the motor's connected to this um, mount plate there. We need to do that's fixed from the underneath by two screws. We need to take those out now. There they are. So we need to disconnect this lot now. Cut the old zip tie off. disconnect that so as you can see running with a brush motor you only use the two connectors off the ESC the third one is for the three phases phase A B and C for um, brushless mode and we're going to need to look at the instruction manual for this to change the settings on the ESC from brush to brushless else obviously we'll plug this in in a minute to this and it won't work unless we reset that so we'll show you how to do that as well okay so the first thing I need to do then um, is get these wires connected to the motor now most brushless motors like this one don't come with any wires attached um, or any connectors so I've bought these um, 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors they're gold plated need a nice spring on there that are good fit and what I'm going to try and do because the motor and ESC are so close on the Neo Scorcher is to solder these straight onto the onto the motor there like that. Mm -hmm. and we can and then we need to cut these off and solder the other end onto there. Put some heat shrink on it and hopefully jobs are good and right, a bit of grass in there. Okay. okay. Right the first thing I'm gonna do is to uh, what's called tin um, the connector. Tinning means applying a, a, a load of solder into um, the component before we try soldering it to anything else. So basically you want to get some solder on both of the, the um, items you want to solder together before you connect them together. That's the secret in getting a good soldered joint. If you've not soldered before don't be scared, it's not difficult. Make sure you've got a nice clean soldering iron. This is um, a damp uh, sponge here just to clean off any excess dirt on there. So what will happen if you add a dirty one? If you have dirt on there it will contaminate the solder and means it, it might not stick so well. Uh, so you need a nice clean, clean soldering iron and then feed the solder in with the heat on to apply a decent amount of solder into that connector what will hopefully will happen when we put it onto the motor that solder when I heat up will flow out and help connect to the other the other side of the connection so there's a good amount of solder in there now mm -hmm. and then what I'm going to do is the same tin the connectors on the motor just got an old pair of pliers there to stop the motor from rolling about the table like it just was mm -hmm. Solder iron, and again, have you got that Alf? Yep. You see, well, it's, it tends to ball up a little bit. There you go. Good amount of solder onto there. Why do you need to do this again? The tinning. Yeah. It's um, when when you, you you solder, you need to get. A good flow of solder onto both of the uh, the components that you're soldering together, and the only way you can really do that is to apply the solder before you try and join the pieces together. If you put try and just 
put the connector, hold it on there, um, yeah. and just apply solder to it. It won't flow properly. It's much right. better to what it's called tin each side first. So yeah. that's what I've done to both pieces there. And let's see if we can actually get that um, to connect on. I don't know whether this will actually uh, hold it in the right position. Just put this on and on down. Get it somewhere near. Okay. It's a very gentle operation, isn't it? Yeah. The whole thing. So now, if I get my soldering iron, clean it off again. Get a nice coating of solder onto the iron so it conducts the heat. And here we go. Nearly. The spring's moving. Let's try again. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's had a, a minute to cool down a little bit. You can see now the solder's flowed into the hole on the connector and it's flowed all around the, the spade itself. If I get the other end of the connector, put it on there, as you can see, we can hold the whole motor with that. That's a really solid connection. Yeah, that's, it won't break off, will it's it? It's not going to break off, it's going to uh, flow the current through there nicely. Um, yeah, I just need to do the same now too the other two um, connections. Yeah, so we'll probably speed that bit up. Yeah, well, hopefully I'll speed that bit up. Oh, yeah. miss that out. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, so you can see there, those are nice solid connections now. The solder's melted, melted fully into the bullet connector and into the spade connector on the motor. And so those are solid. So yeah. I think that's uh, quite yeah, a nice job. Yeah, yeah, that'll do for us. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the other end of the connectors onto the ESC leads. So the first thing I need to do is to actually cut off the old connectors. Um, I'll leave a bit of wire on the connector. You never know if we decide at some point to use this um, ESC on, on another car we can solder these connections back on yeah. so we haven't uh, ruined the ESC for future use with these bullet type connectors. Okay, so we just snip those off. Wait, do you use the orange one? The orange one was used. Yeah, I've explained that earlier. The orange one's not used on um, on brushed, you only have the the two connectors for a brush. Oh, I was gonna say uh, But the brushless is running um, <coughs> on the three wires for the three phase. So what I need to do now is just to remove some of the shield. By the way, why is it most of the time that the uh, brushless don't come with the wires already soldered? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because you can put your your own connectors on, connectors uh, that you want to use, yeah, and different lengths of wire and so on. So what we need to do, I just um, using electrical cutters here, I just soften, just nip into the the shielding, the plastic shielding there, and then just squeeze gently and pull off. I think that should be enough wire sticking out. Okay, we there we go. It. Why is it all loads of tiny little wires instead of just one? That uh, makes it flexible, Alf. Oh. That's what makes the, the wire flexible. If it was, yeah, if it was so, one solid uh, conductor, it'd be very, very stiff. So yeah. what you need to do then, you can see there's a natural twist to the, um, to the wires in the cable there. You need to just twist that around nice and tightly and we'll get some solder on there, as I say it's called tinning, we'll tin those just give that a twist mm -hmm. again with this one ok and if I get my solder station I can how much would a, one of those cost? the solder and iron? yeah I think it was about £10 from Aldi <laughs> yeah not an expensive. They're not expensive at all, no. Yeah, plus you, you, it's not limited to just doing it for cars, is it? You can use it for everything. Of course, yeah. you can yeah. Anything electrical. Mm -hmm. 
Right, so again, look, you can see the solder going onto there. So the end of that wire is nicely tinned up. Let's do the other two. How long does it take for it to kind of cool down until you can touch it mm. after you've tinned it? You have to be careful there. Probably a minute or two. Yeah. So just heat the wire, feed in a load of solder. That looks cool. Yeah. So if you don't do this, the chances of it connecting properly electrically when you solder it are very slim. So make sure you do tin them up. Feeding plenty of solder in there. There you go. Okay, now what we need to do now is ask for the other connectors is to tin up the um, the holes in these connectors. Okay, so let's tin the the connector, the female end of the connector. Plenty of solder in there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this onto what is some of that metal should drop off no yeah. okay there we go I saw some drip out or something so with the um, connector held tightly there I've tinned both surfaces so if we apply some heat to this we should be able to push that in and it'll make a good electrical connection Yeah, then you just got to hold it in okay. place for a bit. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't take long. Once you take the, the soldering iron away, it uh, it hardens very quickly, it sets very quickly. So, actually, it's sticking out a little bit there, but we're going to put some heat shrink over this in a minute. So, that should uh, get rid of that. Just going to trim the ends of this one off. Okay, so those are soldered on now, as you can see. Um, there's a nice flow of solder onto the actual wire itself and into the connector. It's nice and smooth. There are no gaps. Um, there are no bubbles. Um, they will make a good electrical connection. Um, but what will happen now is if we don't cover these up, if they touch each other, they're going to short across. Uh, whatever current's flowing through the ones are going to go affect the other one. It'll probably blow the EC up. So got some heat shrink here. What we're going to do is cut three pieces, slip it over there so it's nicely covering all of the exposed metal um, and just goes about a good centimetre over the actual shield in there mm -hmm. and heat that up and that will shrink down so we need three about that long so there's the one okay so let's get it on so it lines up pretty much with the end of the, the connector there just get a lighter and we should be able to heat that up Ah. Shrink down. I think I've seen that little thing before. Yeah. I just didn't know what, how that happened, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it just re reacts to the heat and it's um, a, like a, a plastic compound, a rubbery plastic that's compound. That is. It shrinks down, yeah, and that's solid now. Yeah. And it's not going to short out, so I'll just do the other two. Okay, so that's done. Nice bit of. Uh, Heat shrink on there, just make sure that it connects all right, nothing's going to fall off. There we go, nothing's touching, it's all nice and solid. We're quite ready a neat to. looking job, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, quite good that. So now we're ready to fit the motor into the car. Mm -hmm. Okay then, well, the motor's all ready to go on. I've taken the motor mount off the other motor, and because as I I think I've mentioned this is uh, 2200 kV. It's only going to spin us about 15 to 16,000 revs. So we're going to try and get a bit more top speed by changing the pinion gear from the standard 17 to a 19 tooth. Mm -hmm. So I need to find the 19 tooth holes in the mount plate. Let's get the screws ready through there. There's 119. And then because of the connectors on the motor being at the top we need to use the holes in the motor that allow us to have the connectors mounted at the top so I think that one there looks about like the closest just screw that one in that 
Okay, a good motor mounts on the plate there, nice and tightly. I'm just going to loosely fit the new pinion gear onto the shaft and I'm not going to bother trying to set the right position because I think the easiest way to do it is to set it when it's actually mounted in the car so it's moving there on the shaft it's not tightened fully up we'll get this mounted in and then set that in the right position when it's in place so if we just slide that down Okay. Get the two screws in the bottom. Right, so the motor's mounted nice and snugly there. So what I'm going to do now is just move the pinion so it sits nicely in the centre of um, the spur gear there and then just use my Allen key to nip it up. Lots of finger tight, that should be enough. So all we need to do now is um, put a bit of grease on that, put the cover back on, connect the motor up and we'll see how it runs. Okay, so the motor's fitted in. We just need to wire it all up now. So the first thing we need to do is to get the, um, the sensor cable uh, plugged in. This came with this motor. Um, so be sure that if you're ordering a sensored motor, if you check if it comes with the lead if it doesn't come with the lead you're going to need one because it won't run at all without this lead connected so let's just see if we can plug that one in looks like it goes in upside down it's a good snug fit and then we need to plug that into the port on the ESC okay so that's plugged in snugly so port A is blue. Plug the blue connector onto there. Okay, it's gone all the way on. B is yellow. So where do you find that? Is it in the manual? It's in the instructions. The it's in the TBLE instructions. Yeah. So we're all wired up now. What we need to do is connect up and then set up the receiver to brushless mode mm -hmm. so turn the ESC on with the set button pressed it goes through um, red green orange on orange let go of it and now it should be flashing orange that means that it's uh, let's just check the connections here it says we're flashing orange in brushless mode if it's correct press set button again so now if I press set that should have completed the setup okay so it's all connected up and the ESC is now configured so if you press forward off there we go our new brushless motor is functioning properly hopefully we'll show you running tomorrow see you soon see ya